Hey guys, James here. Just wanted to touch base and put out a little tutorial um, showing my LE 4040 with a 20 watt laser in action. Um, but I, I also wanted to show you from beginning to end how all this plays out and how everything comes together. So we're going to be using one, we're going to be using uh, Chrome. We're going to be saving an image. I already have one selected. Uh, I'll show you how I get it down off the internet. And then we're going to be using Inkscape to convert it from whatever format it may be in. It's in, currently in a PNG, but whatever. But we're going to be saving it into an SVG so that we can also import it into Lightburn. And then I'll show you how to frame it in. Um, and then specific settings that I specifically use. I don't work for any of these companies. I'm not affiliated with any of them. Um, I'm just going to show you how I get I get things done or I what works for me. Now, what works for me may not necessarily work for you. So, take my uh, tips, tricks, or tutorial or whatever works for me and see if it'll work for you. Let me know down in the comments. So, uh, without any further ado, let's go ahead and start. So, I've got, I love eagles. I'm not going to lie to you. It, it's awesome. This is the image that uh, I want to use right now. So, we can go to the page or I can download it here. I use Google to do all my images. And I always type in... Uh, black and white clip art and it gives me pretty much a wide variety of anything I want um, but in this case I want to use this eagle and I want to right click and save image as um, yes I have a new folder already created for it I don't care what the name is you could rename it if you want you don't have to worry about putting in the PNG at the end or public network graphic is what it's called um, It'll automatically do that. So at this point, we just save. Uh, we're done with the browser at this point. So just get rid of it. Um, we want to bring up Inkscape, which I already had preloaded. And we want to go File and Import. Locate the image we want. Open. Leave everything at default. You don't have to change anything. And then click OK. Now you can put it inside your window here so it's not as bothersome. And then you can zoom in on it if you want. It doesn't matter. That's not a necessity. <coughs> what is a necessity is changing this from its current state, which is an image, which you can see at the bottom, uh, if you're using Inkscape. Um, I'm not going to uh, give tutorials on any of the software package I use Inkscape. So um, once you have your image selected, click Path, Trace Bitmap. I know it's not a bitmap, but right now this it's an image. So I use point six correction point four six five as my default. Um, I do brightness cutoff. I do not do a lot of this other good stuff. You could use edge detection. It works just as well as a brightness cutoff. Um, single scan. I don't do multiple scans. And then update. Uh, this does not change the image. It's your OK button that changes the image from an image to a path. And we want pa a path. So hit OK. It doesn't look like anything happened, but I almost guarantee it did. Shut this screen down and grab the image and move it. You see now you now see two images. Well, one's not an image, one's a path. So in order to find out which one we're on, we just click the image. It is an image. Or we click this one, which is a path. So we do not need the image no more. So you can just left click on it and delete. We are now stuck with a path which is fine. Uh, you see that at the bottom. We don't need to do anything else in Inkscape, so we're just going to shut this down. 
save as, type in eagle, which is already there, and then just save. We no longer need Inkscape. Uh, now, if you're going to be editing the software or the image, you're going to stay in the software and do a lot more editing. But for this particular uh, scope or the scope of this particular tutorial, I'm only changing it from an image to an SVG and then I'm getting out of here. Now we're into Lightburn. Um, several things we can do in Lightburn. I can import or I can do the frame. I typically want, I typically put down a frame first. And the reason why I call it a frame is because this is going to be the border of my image. It's not going to be cut. Uh, it's just so I can zoom or target or make a target per se on my material. And I'll show you that in a minute. <coughs> Excuse me. So with that being said, I'm just going to say, I'm, I'm going to adjust the box. Um, say we want something that's six inches wide by four inches. Okay, now we have something we can play with. Now the reason I call this a frame is because here's a, a piece of wood right here. Sorry, that's four inches by four inches. So I can find the edges, I use a frame. So I'm going to zoom in on a, a target per se. Uh, let me get my other screen up here. And turn my laser on. And now um, I can start moving things around. Now I'm at one and a half by one and a quarter per or thereabouts for my image. So I'm just going to change this to one inch by one inch. That gives me one inch up and one inch to the right of the current laser position. So when I hit start, it's going to move and it's going to start throwing the laser. Uh, it's not going to do anything because I got the laser set at one. So if I leave this image where it is, it's not going to be able to, the image isn't going to draw properly. So I just keep doing this until I get the image where I want it. And then I know that's where my eagle will be. And it's a little too high. So I'm going to move it a little bit down. And I do this a couple times. I don't know how everybody else does this, but this is what works best for me. I have seen out there that uh, you can actually buy a laser and put it on your existing laser, it's just a little pointer, and it will put everything out properly like it should, or like whatever. So now with I, I've got this pretty much set up where I want it, okay? Now I could turn this on and off, but it's not going to do me no good because I have nothing else in here yet. So I'm just going to import the eagle head that I just did. Um, make sure I import that right. Don't want to export, I want to import. There's my SVG. I'm going to sit here and say yes. Now, um, everything's on a single layer. Let me bring this up so you can see it now. Everything's on a single layer right now. And we don't want that. We don't want to cut the box again, but I want to leave the box here because that's my frame. This is what I'm going to put inside of the frame so it cuts right. And I'll show you how to do all that. But first, let's put it on its own layer. Um, I always instantly take, off, take the power down to one just so I don't accidentally cut anything. And uh, we're just going to do lines for this point, for this particular image. But we want... <coughs> this eagle head in this box because if I only have a box that is per se five and five and a half or three and a half inches now that eagle will fit regardless what it is if I go outside of that box like you see here let me turn it on so you can see a little better it's not going to work right so I'm going to zoom I'm going to 
shrink that image and put it inside that box and now I have an eagle now I can add text and I can make that a different color as well but not necessarily a different color I mean a different layer so that we can distinguish uh, between the two so I can get everything set right and I know that's not a fox alien <laughs> but just you know and you can edit all this stuff uh, and go from there let me move this down a little bit now it's an eagle it identifies that as an eagle I'm ah, just joking people <laughs> so now we have an image that we can cut out now if I go to my preview button this is what it's going to look like okay these little red lines that you see in here are the travel lines it's there's not late it's not going to cut it's just showing you the direction of the laser or where its next point of origin is going to be um, we can change all this stuff and if I just don't want those, I go to preview. That's all that's going to cut right there. Or I can do, let's see here, fill. And it shows you what's going to happen. Now, I've got this at 100 lines right now. Um, if I'm not mistaken, let me go check that out. Yeah, 100, 100 lines per inch. For the 20 watt laser, that's fairly decent okay that's not bad so uh, I want to change all this around so that it burns right I'm gonna put it down at 45 percent I'm gonna uh, that's the max power I want to run at right now air assist um, we always want to use air assist but this button really doesn't do anything unless you have everything hooked up properly on your Fox alien board which I don't as you can hear in the background, a little zzz, that is my air pump. So, neither here nor there. This overscan, I do want. If I'm doing light burns, just shading, just back and forth shading, what happens is without the overscan, it starts from point A, say your left or right hand side if you're going biodirectional. Um, which you can change that too, but that's outside of the scope of this. Um, it starts at the first part of the cut, the laser does, and then goes to the next cut, and it stays on, leaving the laser on longer in that one spot, uh, on both the left and the right. You don't want that, so you want to do overscan, and I typically do about 10%. It typically works for me. It's great. So, um, we are in fill. So, uh, eagle. Let's work on the eagle right now. Um, I know this this works for me. These numbers work for my machine. They might be different for your machine. Um, if I want darker cuts, I go a little above 50. Um or right at 50 or 45 whatever um, now the thing is is I can also increase or decrease this speed uh, to say 1200 and this down to 35 and it will will it will produce the same effect as if I had it at 1350 and 45 you save a couple minutes depending on the, the maybe half hour or so on some of your cuts if they're really uh, huge cuts so with that being said I can leave that there I'll, I'll change this down to 35 and and go from there now I want to make sure everything's good but before that I want to get to my machine and I want to Actually, let me move this over here. I'm going to move my machine 
into an area where I can adjust the height and I will show you all that uh, here in a second. So this is 30 millimeters and a lot of people were asking how we do the focusing and whatnot. We actually put it in the corner of the machine here. Now I have an adjustable Z and I'm just gonna move this down until we're just touching the corner. It's, this is the heat sink, the body. Not the laser, but the body. Okay, and we're done. That's all you gotta do. That's The machine has been focused. And let me move that to a different screen so you can see what's going on a little bit closer. So this, oopsies. This measuring block will sit under the corner. Okay. And when it touches, you're good. You're focused. Now, I'm sure Jacob will have more to say on that one. Uh, he's the laser wizard. Listen to him. He's awesome. For me, this works. So, with everything in play, we can start cutting. Everything should work fine now. Now, I didn't get into zeroing your machine, okay? I didn't get into setting your origin, clearing your origin, or where your finished position is. That you can watch additional videos on. This is what works for me, okay? We can take this back to home, or we can take it wherever. The machine knows where it's at right now. So uh, if I wanna start this cut, I can start this cut and know it's going to work right and to verify, as you've seen, I've selected the square. Turn the layer on. I could turn these other ones off so as not to confuse anybody. And go. It's not cutting. It's actually just outlining the project. Okay, now I can actually, let's do the lettering. So let's turn everything on. I can turn the output for the frame or the square. And if you don't want to get confused, just name it as frame. That way you know what it is. Um, when, you get, when you get 20 or 30 of these, well, you can only do 29 uh, layers, you kind of want to know what they are, okay? Here, it's sort of simple. As you click on the image, it highlights the layer that's on. Now the layer is only going to burn or cut what is turned on or off. And it's going to cut or fill what's been designated here in the cut or fill. Now, I can cut with a fill. It'll just cut the whole inside out. Uh, I can just jack this number up to 100 and it'll be good. 1350 uh, and 45 power is pretty decent. Um, 1350, 35 power is pretty decent uh, for this particular machine. I do have Air Assist running. So, like I said, these can be turned off or turned on and they do nothing unless you have uh, everything hooked up to your Fox Alien board properly. Me, I don't. So, I've got to manually turn these on. Sometimes I forget. Sometimes you may not want them. Okay. Um, Watch some of the videos from Jacob or the Laser Wizard, and he'll actually show you more than I could about how to your, uh, set up your feeds and speeds for lasering or, or what works good for him. So right now, we're just going to cut the, the eagle out, and I'm just going to start that cut um, just by hitting start and crossing your fingers. <laughs> 
no it's actually it's actually a pretty good system uh you can't see much here uh it does show you the percentage it does cut pretty quick i'm only going to cut the uh eagle or the lettering and at this point i'll turn off the letter lettering and do the eagle um i'm not going to do fill i'm just going to do line cuts because it will take a little bit and it doesn't take as long as you think and i do have in this machine a vacuum system hooked up so um it's a quiet very quiet machine system, uh, vacuum system, so that works for me. So there you have it. <clears throat> Let me move the laser out of the way so we can see what's going on. And there it is. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Until next tutorial, talk to y'all later.